Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is AP Physics Essentials video 127. It's matter as a particle. In the last video, I talked about how Einstein had shown that photons are not only waves, but they're particles using the photoelectric effect, and he even calculated the energy of photons. Well, another scientist, Louis de Broglie, who didn't even have his PhD, he was just working on his thesis, proposed that matter is maybe made up of waves. And he even came up with a formula where the wavelength of matter is equal to Planck's constant divided by the momentum. Uh, momentum, remember, is the mass times the velocity. Um, his, his mentors didn't know what to do, so they sent this paper off to Einstein, and he actually said, you know, he might be onto something, which eventually led to a Nobel Prize. And so the problem of why we don't see matter like ourselves as waves is found in this formula. And so if you look at my mass, my mass is so big compared to Planck's constant that you get a wavelength that's incredibly small, so we don't even see it. But as the mass gets smaller and smaller and smaller, what you end up getting is matter acting like a wave. And so we now know that matter is both a particle and a wave. It has, just like light, this wave-particle duality. If we're dealing with matter as a particle, we call that classical mechanics or classical physics. If we're dealing with a wave, then it's quantum mechanics. But how do we know, just like light, which kind of a model should we use? It all comes down to scale. If we're dealing with the macroscopic, so this is everything that's even you know microscopic, then it's going to be classical mechanics. But we have to move down to the level of nanoscopic, really, really small particles. Then we deal with matter as a wave. And the de Broglie wavelength tells us you know, how much uh, wavelength effect that we're going to have. And so to set the scale, we've talked about this before, we live in the, in the level of classical physics, classical mechanics. As we increase our speed, then we move into the area of relativity. As we decrease our size, then we move into the level of quantum mechanics. And so size, what size we're at, determines which of these mechanics we're going to use. And so let's just look at matter as a particle. Let's just look at a baseball. A baseball has a mass of 0.15 kilograms, and let's say I throw it, it's got a velocity of 20 meters per second. So we can use de Broglie's wavelength. It's Planck's constant divided by momentum, and rem remember, momentum is simply mass times velocity. So if we need to calculate de Broglie's wavelength, we take Planck's constant, which is a really small number, divided by the mass times the velocity, and we get a wavelength of 2.2 times 10 to the negative 34th meters. That is incredibly small. To tell you how small it is, if we look at the diameter of one hydrogen atom, it's going to be you know, a factor of negative 20 times smaller than that. And so we have wavelengths but the wavelengths inside us are so small that we don't even, we just can essentially ignore it when it comes to classical physics. In the next video, I'm going to, I'm going to start to apply de Broglie's wavelength to smaller matter, and you'll find that the wavelength actually becomes important. And so did you learn to make predictions about using the sense of scale to determine if matter is a particle in classi classical mechanics or a wave in quantum mechanics? I hope so, and I hope that was helpful.